Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this update for Global Markets for the 1st of May. And look, a, a week never goes by these days without um, substantial movements in markets. And in the last week, that substantial movement, particularly in the last couple of days, has occurred with precious metal stocks. And I'm going to talk in more detail about that um, once I've uh, looked at the actual stock markets themselves. But the precious metals markets to me are sending a very, very clear message, uh, along with a number of other indicators that I'm watching. So <clears throat> I, I suggest that uh, this is definitely a time where you need to be reviewing uh, not only your current positioning in your portfolios, but also your, um, your strategy if it is still based around on what you've been doing for the last five or 10 years, because I can tell you it's highly likely that that strategy uh, is becoming less and less appropriate. So let's get on and have a look at uh, at what happened in, uh, in stocks. Um, the S&P index was lower by 27 points for the week, and that all occurred basically in the, in the final uh, two days, particularly uh, the, the session on Friday night. There was a break of some very short-term support, but as we'll see from the chart, um, we're, we're still intact within this trading range, and I'm certainly not pressing the alarm bells uh, on the market, so don't, don't misunderstand me at all. Uh, wait until I get to the section on precious metals, and I think that will give you a, a much clearer uh, picture on, uh, on where I'm coming from. Uh, so... This could be what happened in the last few days in America could be one of two things. It could just be uh, a normal natural easing of overbought conditions because the market has had one heck of a rally from the uh, from the uh, February 12 lows. Um, so it could just be that, which would certainly be um, be quite normal. Or is this part of an ongoing uh, major topping pattern that's going to lead us into a protracted bear market? So that's the big debate that's still raging. We're now closer to knowing uh, the answer to that. However, one thing that I would uh, put forward is that uh, in the past, um, for markets to continue to advance, so we've had a significant rally from the lows in 2009. Uh, we've had a massive rally. It's been running for seven years. We've now, we're now in a pause phase, um, as we'll see, particularly on the monthly chart. Now, normally, if that's going to be a pause rather than a top, then normally earnings growth is going to be quite solid. And so we have a pause for an extended period of time, which could be up to a year or more, and then we get the next leg up. But that is fueled by earnings growth. Now, this time, uh, or certainly at the moment, we're now in, in the third successive quarter of negative earnings growth in America. And if you strip out uh, the energy companies, then it's still um, almost zero growth. So that is a real concern from a fundamental point of view. But I hasten to add that, as I've been pointing out recently, uh, fundamentals are meaning less and less in this market in the short to medium term. And you've really got to basically uh, trade and invest on what you can see and, and not what you think should happen. Um, so I don't know whether this is a pause in an ongoing bull market and we're going to get a breakout. Um, I don't know whether it's uh, part of a topping pattern and we're going into a protracted bear market. Uh, but one thing that does concern me is that we've certainly seen a breakdown in technology and in healthcare. Uh, we saw a, an absolutely shocker result from Apple. Uh, Microsoft wasn't too good. Uh, we had a, a really um, shock re report from Gilead Sciences on um, th on Thursday night, um, and and that came definitely from left field. So the revenues and the profits for these companies that have just done so magnificently well for a number of years uh, are definitely coming off the boil. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, and their outlook statements uh, aren't all that good either. Um, you know, Microsoft came out with a, with a fairly lackluster outlook statement. So that is a concern. But on the positive side, the market breadth is still strong. So by market breadth, I mean the number of companies in the S&P 500 that are still rising. Uh, and that number as a percentage is extremely high. In fact, it's almost to overbought conditions. So... 
there are certainly some positives uh, and some negatives. So I'm not calling them. I'm not, certainly not calling a market top. Uh, what I'm doing though is raising the the caution flag um, very very significantly for reasons that I'll I'll get to in uh, in just a minute. Um, the Aussie stocks. Um, our, our dollar finished down a little bit at 76. We did get up above 78 uh, not too long ago. Uh, and that was largely due to uh, the US dollar went down. Otherwise, I think our dollar might have been down even more. Um, so we were off a little bit. Uh, the ASX 200 finished up by 16 points, but almost certainly it will be down on Monday morning. Uh, miners are faring a little bit better than banks in Australia at the moment, but um, there's, there's not really a great deal happening, to be honest. And our market remains very very much a stock picker's market. Um, you know, you can't really say that if you put your money into any certain sector that you, you're guaranteed that you're not going to um, get caught with a stock that comes out with a, you know, a surprise negative announcement. So let's have a look at the, uh, at the charts. We'll start with the S&P on a daily. And you can see the very, very substantial rally that we've had off the February 12 lows. Um, we've got within a whisker of the all-time highs, uh, only about uh, 1% from the all-time highs in the S&P. Uh, and you can see we broke a very short-term support line here on, on Friday night. But you'll notice that the range of the candle isn't particularly big from top to bottom. You'll notice that it closed well off its lows. And I think I would only be, uh, I'd only have confirmation of probably something more significant in terms of retracement if we break this level here, which is at 2023. So for me, that's probably the line in the sand. If we break that level, then uh, chances are we're heading down uh, probably below uh, the 1980 to 2000 level. Uh, but even that still doesn't really tell us whether this is a bigger picture topping pattern or not. So there are a couple of key levels uh, to look for. And whilst it's not a major concern uh, for me or not a, not a major influencer for me, uh, just recognize that we are now into May. May through September is the seasonally the weakest time of the year. Now, that doesn't mean that you should, you know, go and throw all your stocks out. Um, far from it, because seasonality is only just, you know, one part of a very multifaceted puzzle. This is the S&P on a monthly chart. Um, so you can see here we've really, we're still at a similar level to where we were at in November 2014. Um, is this a pause in and then we'll get another leg to the upside? It's possible because central banks are just doing so many crazy things and flooding the, the global financial system with liquidity that anything's possible. But as I've said, we've never seen uh, a pattern like this form and then go on to start a new leg up without strong earnings growth. And frankly, we're just not getting strong earnings growth or anything remotely like it at the moment. So, um, uh, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, the precious metals. This is really what I want to talk about because I think this is, uh, this is perhaps the canary in the coal mine. This is sending us a signal that all is not well in uh, in the market. Gold rocketed $60 higher for the week, uh, one of the biggest weeks that we've had in quite some time, as you'll see on the chart. Uh, encouragingly, gold stocks are rising at four times faster than, uh, than the price of gold is. And as you've heard me say ad nauseum, that gold stock prices will lead the underlying metal in both directions. They will lead to the downside and they will certainly lead to the upside. So for me, um, that's uh, a, just another strong confirmation apart from the price action we're seeing in gold. Um, so uh, it's just more and more evidence that this rally in um, or this bull market unfolding in gold and gold stocks is the real deal. And it's going to go on for, or it's probably going to go on for 
uh, many many years and go a considerable distance because that has what that's what's happened um, each time we've gone into a gold bull market. It doesn't just run for a couple of months and then reverse back down again. It goes for a lengthy period of time. Um, the second thing is, uh, and I started talking about this probably three or four months ago, that there is a, a long-term ratio between gold and gold stocks and that the value of gold stocks relative to gold had fallen to an absurdly low level and that ultimately that ratio would revert to the mean and would return to the long-term average. Now I hasten to add that I and no one else has any idea how long that process of reversion will take. Uh, could take several years, it might all happen in a few months, no one knows. However, it was always likely that that mean reversion was going to happen. In other words, gold stocks would have to appreciate substantially more quickly than gold, or in fact, um, gold didn't need to move at all. And we're now seeing the fact that gold stocks are rising four times faster than gold. We're seeing that ratio start to come down, but it's still got a long way to go. So the mean reversion is underway, and that's one more piece of confirmation for me that this is a real deal bull market in gold. And of course, that means that there's almost certainly going to be very, very substantial gains. Um, higher metals prices are not necessary. So I just want to reinforce that. So if you're following the price of gold and, and thinking that that's, you know, that's the only thing you should be watching, then it's not. Uh, higher metals prices, and I think the possibility of, of gold uh, going back to new all-time highs above $2,000 an ounce at some point in the future, I think is is extremely strong. Uh, the price of silver going back above its previous highs of $50 an ounce, I think are also extremely strong. Um, so I think over time, higher metals prices are extremely likely. However, I really don't know how long that period is. It could take several years for that to occur, and it's not necessary for uh, gold and silver stock prices to rise significantly. So for me, that'll just be the icing on the cake. Now, silver continued a, a spectacular run. Uh, it's up 28% this year versus 20 for gold. It was lagging, and now all of a sudden, it's really started to accelerate. And that's a third confirmation of a bull market in, in precious metals when, when silver starts to outperform gold. Um, and some people have said, yeah, but the US dollar's falling, so that's why. But it's not. Silver's up 28, gold's up 20, and the US dollar is only down by 6% this year. So this is only, uh, to a minor degree, about currency movement. This is uh, absolutely about uh, a huge sum of money going into gold, going into gold stocks. Um, it's easy to get that data. You, you just track what's going into the uh, into the ETFs, uh, GLD, GDX. Uh, that data is available on a daily basis, and there's no question that there's massive amounts of real money that's uh, that's flowing into these sectors. So the question for me, and this is really, I guess, the essence of today's whole uh, video presentation. Um, just step back and ask yourself why precious metal stocks are behaving in the way that they are. Uh, it's really quite extraordinary the rises that we've seen in the last couple of weeks. And what I mean uh, in terms of behavior is there's been no retracements. The prices have really just gone straight up. There's been no profit taking. And that is incredibly unusual in any market. And it's even more unusual in precious metals, which is a very volatile sector. It's a sector where profit takers and short term traders come in and out constantly. So for there to have been no retracement and no real evidence of any um, uh, any worthwhile profit taking that really sends a significant signal to me. On Friday night, we saw the price of Barrick Gold rise 10% in a single session. Um, it was an extraordinary rise. In fact, the biggest gold miner in the world was one of the, the biggest percentage gainers amongst US precious metal stocks. And, and that's incredibly unusual. Uh, because normally you would see some of the small to mid cap stocks on a percentage basis doing well. But when the world's biggest miner rises 10%, then you know that's telling you that there's a huge amount of 
huge amount of money that's flowing into this and they're going into the barracks and the newmonts um, because they've got so much money that they want to put into this that they they can't put it into the smaller stocks they have to go into the big stocks you know you think about the last time you saw bhp uh, rise by 10 percent in a single session i mean that is a massive move um well let's have a before i go on let's just have a look at some of the charts so that you understand where i'm uh, where I'm coming from on this. So we'll look first of all at at gold. We'll look at gold on a daily basis. So we'll pan back and, and clearly we've we've blown away that uh, that downtrending wedge pattern that we had since 2013. Uh, we had a little bit of a a little bit of easing, but really this is just a this is just a consolidation. Uh, a retracement would have brought the level down down around here, at least to here, and probably more likely down here around 1160. That didn't occur. And you can see that we had a very, very substantial move and a big breakout on Friday night, uh, two really powerful days. Now, you get a better side of this when you look at it on the weekly chart. Uh, it gives you greater clarity around it. Strong rise, no retracement, consolidation sideways, and now big move. Uh, I really think this is this is on in earnest now for uh, for precious metals. Let's look at silver. This is silver on a daily chart. So you can see that we've uh, it was only just a week or two ago that still silver was still stuck, and yet now it's it's absolutely roared higher in a very short space of time. And if we look at this on a weekly chart, you can see it more clearly. Um, we're getting a sustained move now that uh, is certainly looking a heck of a lot better than what we've seen for some time. Now, silver's still got a bit of work to do. It still needs to get above 1850. But I can tell you the way that uh, some of the better silver stocks are behaving at the moment, um, you know, it, it really is in very, very impressive action. Uh, let's just look at the HUI index as one example of, uh, of the, the gold, the movement in gold stocks. So we had uh, we had resistance here at 150-ish. Uh, we broke straight through that, no retracement. We had more resistance up here at 202. We just absolutely blew that away on uh, on Thursday and Friday night. So you can see the strength of the move here. Now. My view is that uh, that the Fed is now trapped in being able to raise or uh, or lower interest rates, um, and you know circumstances globally in terms of economic growth um, and the ability to handle the debt is just getting uh, is just getting worse and worse. Uh, also, the central banks of Japan, Europe. Uh, are certainly trapped as well. They're in the they're in the same position. They're between a rock and a hard place, and possibly even China as well. Um, I, I just don't know what opinion to have about China because you can read a, a a very positive slant on it. You can read a very negative slant on it, and no one really knows whether the data that's being provided out of uh, China is um, uh, is fair income or not. So it's pretty hard to know about China. Uh, Clearly negative interest rates, which now covers uh, a very substantial portion of the of the world's bond market. Uh, negative rates are clearly not working, and they're actually causing negative effects. They're not causing the the um, stimulation to investment, which is the plan, forcing forcing businesses to borrow and invest, and forcing investors to spend. Um, you know, clearly that's not working. People are actually panicking about this, and they're starting to withdraw money from the um, from the paper uh, financial system, and that's part of the reason that gold is moving because that money that's coming out of the financial paper system is uh, some of it's going into gold, which is you know it, it's a tangible uh, commodity. Now, if um, so negative negative interest rates are not working, so I, I just don't see that experiment as being continued. In fact, it may have to be unwound if the negative effects start to snowball. Uh, and higher rates is going to be absolutely disastrous for the debt obligations of, of all these central banks. 
and, and governments. So I can't see that central banks can really go either way. So it's these fears, um, plus the negative carry trade is why precious metals are soaring. Now, what the heck do I mean by negative carry trade? It means that when interest rates are effectively negative, that the big traders can, can borrow in euros or yen, and they can go and buy gold and silver effectively for free. So why, why wouldn't you? Um, so that's that's part of the reasons. There's a whole bunch of reasons why precious metals are soaring, but that, that's certainly one of the one of the key ones. So the bottom line for me is that central banks, on, on a big picture level, central banks have bet the farm, they've bent the financial system, that their theories would work, that you can uh, treble the debt, that you can go into negative interest rates, and that you can actually force the global financial system to do things which it doesn't want to do. Now, clearly, those theories are not working. Um, and at some point, there's going to be a loss of confidence uh, in in the, the ability of central banks to control things. Now, I've been talking about this for two or three years, and I've been saying that ultimately there would be a substantial day of reckoning, which would which would probably dwarf 2008. However, I equally said that that the indications of that were not on the horizon and that they could be 5, 10 or even 20 years away. My view is changing. I still don't know when it's going to happen, but I sense that it's going to happen a lot sooner. That day of reckoning is coming forward rapidly and that ultimately the straw that will break the camel's back is that uh, when when confidence starts to wane in the central banks. And, and I see that process happening now. So the debt problem that we had in 2008, which was massive then, can't be solved by trebling the debt, which is what's happened in the last um, eight years or so. And I think a, a major dislocation in, in financial markets is moving closer. But it could be several years away yet, so don't panic. Um, I'm watching the bond market very, very closely because that's where the first real signals will come from. Uh, the people that are uh, the major players in the bond market are the smartest guys in the room. They're the ones that are going to be really taking action the soonest. So that's where the signs will be. So don't worry about getting caught out um, if, you're, um, you know, if you are watching those signals. Now, turning to other commodities, uh, copper was steady at 228, so it was really just about currency movement, really. But crude oil um, moved higher again, uh, almost to $46. This rally in in crude oil and the rally in crude oil stocks is real, the same as it's real with gold. But unlike gold, where there's a very powerful fundamental case for why people would want to put their money into gold, um, there's still a huge supply and demand imbalance in the oil market that it's hard to see can be resolved within at least several years. You know, global demand for oil is going to have to kick up substantially, uh, and it's hard to see the circumstances under which that's going to happen. So the fundamentals around crude oil are really poor for it to hold at this level or go higher. So that's the difference between the two. Yes, gold is rallying. Yes, oil is rallying. Is rallying. Uh, so those technical rallies are real. But the fundamentals around gold are extremely compelling. The fundamentals around crude oil are, are just not. In fact, it's the opposite. Uh, there is extre an extreme level of overbought uh, in the futures market. Uh, the number of people that are long oil contracts uh, is in an extreme. So my view would be stay clear of the energy sector. Yes, it might continue higher. Uh, yes, we're seeing a rebound in in stocks like Santos and, uh, and and Woodside to a lesser degree. But I just think the risks here far outweigh the potential reward. Um, so it's a sector that I'm staying clear of for the time being. Uh, I believe this will be a volatile traders market for a long period of time. And the only time you should be buying oil stocks is after a significant sell-off. Uh, and all you're doing there is is playing the rebound. There's the spot copper chart. Uh, managed to move uh, a little bit higher in the last week as the US dollar went down. Uh, this is something I, uh, a, a quote that I, uh, I read this morning. Uh, 
which really goes to the heart of, of what I'm saying, and that is that I believe risks are quite elevated at the moment. Um, there's a there's a great saying, it's been repeated by many, many people, but I think it might have been uh, Benny Hill that first said it, and that is never play leapfrog with a unicorn. And if you think about playing leapfrog with a unicorn, you'll understand what the, the very likely outcome of that is. And, um, and I think that's what a lot of people are doing who are just blindly following the, the market higher. Uh, yes, the precious metals market is fantastic. And, you know, members of special share education have been having an absolutely lovely time. Uh, so that side of the market is going well. Um, but uh, if you are just blindly long the market and you're not following the, the indicators that could signal a reversal, then, you know, I suggest you are playing leapfrog with the unicorn and it's going to be a very painful outcome. So to wrap it up, I know it's been a longer session uh, today, but look, this is just so important. It's so critical at this at this point in time. Uh, caution is strongly recommended. Um, I don't know which way the market is going to go. Central banks have got bottomless resources. Um, but the question in my mind now is, can... Can they hold the system together? And there's no question in my mind that stock markets are at the levels they're at purely because of central bank action. If it wasn't for that, stock markets would be um, would be lower. Uh, can we trust that central banks can keep the system together for long enough for the global economy to pick up, for corporate profits growth to pick up? Um, that's the big question for me. So... Um, I'm not pressing the panic button here. I'm just saying that when you look at it from a risk and reward point of view, the risks are getting higher and I don't believe the reward is there in, in many parts of the market. Commodity stocks are where the opportunities really are. Um, uh, precious metals, unquestionably the place to be at the moment, but beware the volatility. Now, we've not seen much at the moment. The rally's been huge. It's gone straight up, but that in itself... I think increases the risk of, of future volatility. So as I've been saying, ad nauseum for uh, for the five, six, seven years I've been doing these videos, you must have a predetermined plan. If you're trying to participate without a predetermined thought out plan, you are playing Russian roulette with the market. Just some final thoughts to wrap it up. Uh, this is a great quote from Warren Buffett, which I think is so appropriate. Risk, you know, a lot, lot of financial gurus and, and the mainstream financial media, you know, talk about risk and reward and they say that that, you know, risk is related to the to the stock or risk is related to the market. And I've said for years that I think that is only true to a very minor degree. Far more risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. Um, and that's that's a direct quote from Warren Buffett and I think that's incredibly true. Um, so your plan must be put together with conviction. So not only have you got to have a plan, which most people don't have in my experience. Um, you know, I've been mentoring people now for 15 years and, it, and that extends to hundreds, if not thousands. Um, so I know what the majority of people tend to do. And most people don't have a plan. Uh, your plan must be put together with conviction, however, um, because it's about getting the right balance uh, between risk and reward um, for, for you specifically, but look, it's, it's far more than that. You have to remain open-minded. Yes, you can take a view, and I take a view, but I'm prepared to change that view on in, in an instant uh, about a number of things. Uh, Gilead Sciences is a company that I've been an extremely enthusiastic supporter of for several years, and we've actually done quite well out of it. But the report they came out with on Thursday night, um, in my view, was extremely disappointing. So I've now changed my view on that stock, and I did it basically instantly. So you have to remain open-minded because things can change quite dramatically in the market. Uh, and the, the market will challenge your conviction. And this is the difficulty for most traders and investors, that it's, you know, it's one thing to have a plan, it's another thing to feel you know confident about it, but the market will challenge your conviction. And this is the thing that I spend most of my time uh, attempting to do with, uh, with my members in specialist education, so they know full well how this process works. 
and the, and the benefits. I'm speaking now to to people viewing this who aren't members of Specialist Share Education. Uh, you know, whether it's me or it's somebody else, um, there's a huge advantage in having someone that's been through the mill that can help you put that plan together uh, and help you stay on track with that plan. Because I can assure you, in the coming years, you're going to be challenged uh, very, very significantly. So that's it for uh, for this week. It's a long one, but a very, very important one in my view. Uh, for non-members, there's my contact details. Would love to hear from you. Cheers.